there are many fine structure, for instance, existence of common multiple and so on. And this lattice structure determines later by the range that the complement is K pi one space, higher homotopy group vanish. That is quite strong, distinct structure. And later, this becomes a model case, and people want to study what happened for the next case, a fine case, and so on. And a fine case recently was solved that the complement of the discriminant is K pi one. But essentially, a fine case and finite case are Cocta group. But I was studying, as Klaus this morning introduced, I, was, I introduced elliptic singularity and elliptic root system. Then in that case, they are the viral group is no longer Coxta. And this creates very delicate mu structure. And that is a point I want to discuss today. And I want to show that this structure induces also higher homotopy classes on the complement of discriminant. And this is still conjectural. I couldn't show that non-vanishing of them. Nevertheless, it seems quite interesting that there exists such structures. So that is a subject I want to describe today. Nevertheless, yesterday when I was preparing, I found altogether 24 or five items I should explain. So inside in one hour, the talk is each item two to two, three minutes, and it's too almost <laughs> impossible. <laughs> so, it comes again. <laughs> sorry? Kidding. So, many places I should be sketchy. But if you have any question, please stop me and ask questions. So, the, as I said, I'll start with the uh, next case the classical finite reflection group a fine reflection group, and then next case is the so-called elliptic reflection group. So I start with the elliptic root system. That is abs some abstract formulation of the, for the simp simple elliptic singularity, you look at the so-called Milner fiber and that is of vanishing cycles and set of vanishing cycles. That type of structure formalized to the elliptic root system. So let me explain axiom. So let be a real vector space, finite dimensional, and I let I be a symmetric bilinear form non-zero, symmetric. Then a subset R in F is called generalized system. If it satisfied Exactly the almost same as the classical axiom for finite uh, for root system. That means you consider first the additive subgroup generated by this set subset R. I mean by this the some additive extension of R. That is surely a subgroup of the vector space A is a full that means if you tensorize the real number field, they get you get the isomorphic. Second is for, for any alpha in R, uh, I alpha alpha the length is positive, and you define alpha check by uh, this is more or less standard technique in the root system in the classical theory. For instance, you can find in the blue box. And also you define reflection W alpha acting on the vector space U, uh, uh, vector space F by 
your standard definition. I guess everybody knows, but I just write again. And then the, uh, the action, second action is that for any alpha beta, I alpha check beta uh, integers. And third action says that for any alpha in R, the action of the reflection preserves the set R. And the fourth action is that some irreducibility, very roughly speaking, if R decomposes into the union of the union of two subsets, which are perpendicular with respect to I, then one of the R1 is empty or R2 empty. And such system is called a generalized root system. This generalizes the formalized the structure of the vanishing cycles for, for instance, isolated singularity or some other uh, this, uh, exceptional object in the triangulated category or many, many formulation uh, exist, but I don't want to discuss more. Then if I is positive definite, then R is automatically finite and R is a finite root system. Oh, I, I forgot to say that. Let us denote the, R, the group generated by reflections and called the value group here. If I is positive semi definite and the space of the radical, that means the element subset of F, which is perpendicular to total space, this, that is radical, if that is rank one, then it is automatically the affine root, affine root, root system in the sense of McDonald's. Then, so I positive semi definite and I have rank two. Then it is called, this is the definition, R and elliptic root system. Mm -hmm. And so on and so on. In the higher case, Oh, there are recently very interesting studies that you can find again for higher case using the weighted projective curve. These uh, root system are realized, and they, there is some cluster for them and uh, infinity form. But I don't want to discuss, and I restrict to this case today. And Radical in that case, radical is rank two, but there is some. If you choose some one dimensional substance found by some uh, integral element, say A is in the QR, this subspace is called marking, and then the pair, this RG, is called the um, ellip uh, marked elliptic root system. And this marking, I don't want to discuss today, but this marking corresponds to a choice of a primitive form associated with this theory. But I don't want to discuss anything about primitive form or integrable structure, but just topology. So I that you just consider marked elliptic root system. And then the can I see most elliptic root system are completely classified. They are classified. Mm -hmm. 
Plus by by so called the elliptic diagram. This is a list of elliptic uh, diagram, but I uh, recently this is uh, under the restriction the quotient. Uh, this list is under the restriction that R over G. This is a, a fine root system. A fine root system reduced under that assumption. There is classification and. And it looks like too much complicated for you, but if you understand the rule, it's very easy. The, this so real axis, real the first of the vertex correspond to the some basis inside the root system, and some edge shows some intersection number between two edges. For instance, uh, two vertexes. For instance, the, each vertex usually have norm two, self-intersection number is two. And if you have a simple edge, then intersection number between two vertex is minus one. And in if there is some strange arrow, that means some of one of the root is length two or three, and according to the setting. But the, and this dot is it is a quite new phenomenon. This is the reason I'm talking. This is no longer Coxta group. Is these two vertex is connected by double dot edge. It implies intersection number is positive two. That means this is no longer in the sense of Carter matrix. Yeah, Carter matrix is usually off diagonal uh, non-positive, but elliptic case you get positive intersection number. And this creates at many places some new phenomena. I don't want to discuss today here. There is some theory of constructing D algebra, some construction of Hecke algebra, and so on. And every time, if you want to do some parallel to the classical theory of D algebra representation theory, some obstruction or problem appears at the place where this double dot in the discussion. And today, exactly also, I want to discuss that some higher homotopy group on the complement should appear because of this double dot. That is a subject I want to discuss today. But is, so, and also, if you shrink the double dot to one point, it is exactly the well known classical finite uh, affine diagram. For instance, it, even this look like complicated, but if shrink double dot pair into one point, this is nothing but A type. Yeah, most important case. Okay. Yeah. This uh, E8, E7, E6. That is, there is only one pair of points where double dot uh, Exist. If you shrink this double dot pair, it becomes standard E8 diagram. Yeah, E811, E8, E7, E6, and so on. These are the elliptic diagrams. That, and this diagram completely classify the this elliptic root system under this assumption. Without this assumption, recently Yohara and Yoshisa Saito get that complete list of the classifications. Okay, then I close this part and then I go to the next page. For the board. Yeah. Ah, maybe, ah, uh, maybe I skip Yeah, I want to give a description of the wild group. Elliptic wild group is, of course, this, this group is generated by this reflection at each vertex on the diagram. And then the, the group is no longer Coxter group in the sense that if at the place there is a double dot line, 
the relation between the these two vertex are complicated, a little bit more complicated than classical coxal relation. Uh, I prepared some pictures, but better no, I don't have time to and better skip. And let, let's go to the next. Then I'm going to talk about the description of elliptic period domain and elliptic uh, alting group. That means the fundamental group of the regular orbits for the elliptic root system. In the classical case, for instance, finite reflection group case, you uh, you just consider the complex dual space where the wild group acts, and then you are going to study the cosmic space. But elliptic case, it don't, I don't take not merely the dual space, but one dimensional extension that comes from the study of the Gauss-Mannion connection, but that also I skip. But because of the existence of the radical, two dimensional radical, the Gauss-Mannion connection has degeneration and some fusion corresponding to the radical degenerate. Then accordingly, I need to extend the space one dimension. That, so I just homer write down. So F with the original one, then you are going to consider F tilde one dimensional extension with where in a inner product extended to my tilde dimensional real one dimensional extension such that the radical of I tilde equal G the given marking. This gives a unique description of F tilde and you are going to consider this such extension called hyperbolic extension. Then you are going to consider the E tilde, the following. Some dual space, complex dual space. If you have a geometric idea, it implies a period integral. Some elements here, the cycle, are integrated to a complex number, but you can consider only formally a linear map. And uh, yeah, I, I forgot to say it's one important point. Yeah, your radical I is rank two. Then I'm going to choose two generators, R A, R B, where A was originally the generator of the lattice, and B are uh, just chosen from invariant. And uh, also, I did I don't discuss the geometry, but this A B are the A B cycles on the elliptic curve. But this is geometric idea, but I don't go more. But if you understand in that style, the condition I'm going to pose here now is easy to understand. You ask the element x a equal one and x b of the imaginary part of x is positive. This is a Standard condition appeared in the elliptic integral theory, but I just forget and just formally let us find E tilde in this way. And obviously, the wild group or reflection for each alpha, reflection W alpha extends to uh, W tilde alpha acting on this space, it's easy to see that since your root r is belonging to this space, you can define the reflection of alpha in this space. 
And then the group theta denoted by W tilde R, that is a group generated by deflection on this space, is uh, just extension of the original wide group by the center, which is cyclic, infinite cyclic group, where the center is generated by Cox star element to the power Cox star number in the elliptic sense. But uh, I, I should skip what is the Cox star element that is simply the product of reflection on the elliptic dial. Yeah, so this is the central extension of the wire group that acts on this space. Then it's natural to ask what is the quotient space by the action? Yeah, but before going further, it's clear that the imaginary part of the B is positive. Then by projecting to the B direction, you have a natural fiber vibration. It's this is the fiber vibration, but then you factorize this quotient by the following way: your double tilde is uh, if you restrict your action to the finite quotient space, then it goes down to the finite wire group. Then the kernel of that is some central extension of rank 2L space. It is a Heisenberg group. Then you, before you are going to consider the full quotient of the you factorize by the Heisenberg group. And I don't have time to, but to discuss detail, but the, if you know the classical theory of the Abelian variety, this is a family of Abelian variety, polarized Heisenberg group quotient defines a family of Abelian varieties. Furthermore, this Heisenberg group, so that is a central extension of the Abelian group, defines some ch first chunk class of this Abelian variety. And one can calculate easily that the first chunk class it is negative with negative polarization. That means you, it's a family of Abelian variety, let us call it Paris, L tilde. Then it is factored through the algebraic variety called Abelian variety. And here is a line bundle, just a bundle on this. There is some such structure. I don't have time to explain detail, but there is some geometric structure. And this is a intermediate quotient instead of dividing the whole group, but still double. That means you need to, to get the full quotient, you need to divide off. Yes, this may go to here. You need to divide still by the wire group. This process is done by the following. You are going to consider the section of this line bundle yeah this is negative bundle then ah here yeah let us say L inverse yeah. and then on this this is a space of some global section of some line bundle and 
you can write down this by the theta function. Yeah, there is all, all again very classical theory to describe the discrete spectrum of abelian variety. Then on that space, still this finite value group acts. So you consider invariant. Then this being nothing but the ring, polynomial ring over the polymeric function on H, then generated by theta function, theta one to theta two. Yeah, this is a analog of the classical uh, Shivarez theorem for the finite case. Finite reflection group is generated by homogeneous element, and similar phenomena happen in the elliptic case using the theta functions. That means this quotient space is if I, I without explanation I get some geometric quotient, this space is equal to the spec theme of this link. That means very roughly speaking, theta zero to theta. Yeah? That means this is very roughly speaking, C L plus one complex vector space times upper half plane. And then again, on this space, you have a system of reflection hyperplanes, H alpha, alpha belong elliptic roots. And this system it is the, you have a system of reflection hyperplane, it goes down to the this uh, C L plus one. And they, uh, for, for usually this is called elliptic invariant space. And this hyperplane falls down to uh, some called discriminant. Actually, discriminant is defined theta a square equals zero, where theta square, theta a is the Jacobian of this theta zero to theta a. This is not an invariant function, but theta a square defines an invariant function defined on hypersurface called discriminant, elliptic discriminant here. That means, and also it's easy, not easy, but uh, you, you can show that the wild group action on this space has exactly fixed point on the reflection hyperplane. That means complement of the discriminant is exactly the elliptic, elliptic constant of the discriminant is the regular orbit space. For the, this central extension of the wild group. So it's a, so now I come to the point, the question. What is the topology of this? What is a fundamental group? What are the higher homotopy groups? And I, uh, for the fundamental group, recently joint, it's not yet published, but joint with uh, Yoshisa Saito, I came to the description quite classical, uh, parallel to the Briscon result that this group is described like the some grid relation. But uh, this new grid relation is. Yeah, is it? Yes. Uh, the ring of invariant functions is a big graded or a graded ring? Sorry? The ring of invariant functions. Oh, yeah, yeah, the graded. I was not explaining clearly, but I just erased that. Oh. Yeah, this, this gives a grading, the line bundle to the power k. So case degree, this is a degree. And it's given by the Euler vector field. I mean, later when you 
or is another degree? Yeah, this, 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 yeah, you consider the case power mm -hmm. of the, this uh, line bundle and the section gives a theta function and you call that theta function has degree A. In this way, this becomes a graded ring and this is infinite. The question is, uh, when you when you define the Euler vector field and define degree as the eigenvalue of the oh, yeah, 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 that's uh, obvious. Yeah, since this is a polynomial ring, and uh, put the degree zero to the this modular function on this on upper half phase. We also have the degree of the model of forms because the theta function should be yeah model of forms and also the equipping of coefficients. Yeah, yeah, they, they have some degree. And actually, I didn't explain here, but Coxter element for the elliptic root system, you look at the eigenvalues of the Coxter element, and it they give exactly the degree of the invariance. Therefore, you have two degrees. Mm -hmm. I mean, one of the effective field that the degrees of the, the, the polynomials, I mean, the invariant functions, and the degree of the model of forms also. But, uh, we are vector field is defined by this. This is the same thing. By the way, Euler vector field, I introduced the concept more than 50 years ago. It became very popular, but at that time, it was very strange name. And Briscoe said, why you do that? Yeah, anyhow, it graded in with this thing. Some Euler vector field, and that coincides with the degree of theta function. So the result going to is the Yoshida cycle. From um, generator system, V alpha one to V alpha I, yeah. alpha I is running. Uh, I forgot to give the name of the elliptic linking diagram. Let us call gamma RH the elliptic linking diagram. I show the picture already uh, for that diagram. Uh, for each vertex of that diagram, you associate some generators. And then some system of relation, which I call uh, elliptic Alpine relation. May I put some picture again? Yeah, I, should, I want to show the picture. This fundamental group has expression using the elliptic. Yes. So here are the list of the epic. Uh, is there a pointer of this? No, no, it's a hard, it's not very important. Okay. Yeah. So for each vertex alpha, you associate some generator uh, G, uh, for alpha, you associate some generator G alpha. Then for... Yeah, it does work. No? Yes, I have to put that screen. Oh, that's great. 
I'm not sure, sorry. Yeah. Okay, but uh, if you look at the first one, two, three, four, five lines, or four lines, it's a classical braid relation, or mm -hmm. classical relation. If two vertex are disconnected, the generators are commutative. If they are connected one uh, simple edge, then the relation is ABA equals BAB. If they have some non simple raised edge, it gets some more higher cox style um, artin braid relations. But because of this double dot in the elliptic diagram, you get new system of relation. Here are the sum list. Okay. Is it possible to zoom so that because here we, we have a, a problem in that? <laughs> Yeah, you see, for the, these are the classical braid relations, yeah? Or you remember that Coxter relation type. But if you have a double dot, there is some triangle, then you get new relation, including this vertex and that vertex, alpha and alpha star. But if you put alpha, G alpha equal, star equal G alpha, then, well, in this case, uh, strange stuff, something wrong. Now, if we got something missing here. Uh, okay, but uh, anyhow, you can give some interpretation of this relation, but anyhow, you get a system of new relations. And all these relations determine the elliptic wide group. Ah, no, no, elliptic uh, braid group or elliptic fundamental group. So these elliptic uh, are relations are list there. Then it was a natural question whether this group, similar to the classical case, has some lattice structure. That means common multiplicity, common multiple divisor theory, and so on. Whether this group has such structure, and then a letter denote a symbol a notation. I denote also this uh, Artin group, so uh, elliptic Artin group A R of R D. Yeah. Then, according to the Classical trial, we introduce again the monoid. That means again the generators are the same, same. For every vertex of the elliptic diagram, you associate some generators alpha i for each alpha i for the vertex of Rg. And you define in relation, but this time I consider only inside the uh, not group, but inside the monoid. That means I'm not considered the negative power of generator. So in order to distinguish the product inside this group and product inside the uh, monoid, I switch some notation R by R monoid. That means the following. If some relation G, some, some words, some P of some GI equal some Q of G. Some, if there exists such relation, this equality, some relation, I define some monoid relation p of this ai is equivalent to the q of ai in this way i introduce a relation on this letter and the reason i distinguish this relation and that relation is the following reason in the classical uh, artin group case the natural localization map that means the map from the this monoid to the classical to the 
group was injective here. Yeah. And actually, not only injective, but because of some common divisor theory, et cetera, we can determine the word problem, conjugacy problem, every, almost all combinatory group theoretic questions are solved. But in the elliptic case, as I shall show in a minute, that this is not injective. That means there exists some kernel for this map. Then we should distinguish the equality in this space and the equality in this space. That's the reason I use tilde instead of equal in this monoid. Yeah, and the, this monoid, I hope it's clear what I mean by this notation. I, I know that to put right. That means you are going to consider the positive sequence of these AIs. And if some sequence contains some substring like PA, then you are allowed to replace this PA part by QA, and so on. This sort of replacing, you can bring one word to the other word. And if one word go to the other word, they, I, let us call them in equivalent. And the quotient space by the equivalent relation is by definition of the monoid. And as I said, this is not injective. Okay, may I, uh, I, I go to the reason why. How can I do that? I want to choose uh... okay. yes. yeah. Then I'm going to explain what happened in this new monoid. Yeah, this uh, elliptic case, as I said, the elliptic diagram contains double dot. And the, then there are essentially two basic uh, sub diagram. Typical di sub diagram is some branching case at the, this double dot case. This is E678 case. And another case is. Uh, If uh, you remember the diagram for A type, B type, C type, then it contains a pair of some double dot like, like this picture. Then what happens here is the following. You consider such sub diagram and consider the product of A, A star, the reflection, uh, the reflection uh, generator correspond to this and B, B. Usually, these two elements in the wire group generate the lattice, the root lattice, so that they, um, BB star and A star and A star, BB star, they should be coincide. They are, should be commutative. But in the monoid, you find they are, they, this expression, that expression are not equal, but the following happens. If you multiply some er additional element A star from the left to the S and also from the left to the T, then they become equivalent. That means this A star, uh, A star, if you divide by the A star from both sides, they are not equivalent. Uh, it's not written somewhere, but I forgot to write somewhere. In this Story, A star are uh, not equivalent in this sense to the BB star. You, you can prove it by checking the relation. Nevertheless, uh, this S and T, yeah. But by multiplying some element from the left or from the right, they become equivalent. This phenomenon is, I just have called, non cancellativity. So in the elliptic case, this this is a fast non-cancellativity for A, B, C, D type. 
and for the E678 case, there is such subdiagram. And in that case, a, a bit more complicated, but you consider such S12 or S21, SP12, and they, X and P are S1, S case are each equivalent to each other, T and T1 is equivalent, but they are not, S and T are not equivalent. So this and this element are not equivalent, but if you multiply some additional strange factors like this, they become equivalent. So this is non-cancellativity. And this looks like very pathological at the beginning when I found this is joint discussion with Ishibe, my former student. We found this strange phenomenon and we are puzzled. This is so elliptic case, we cannot develop classical outing group theory and what happened. And then I'm going to describe in the following next time that these data give the construction of second homotopy class on the complement of the S minus the discriminant. But uh, anyhow, such non cancellative pair, let us call NC. NCTS means a non cancellative pair on the T and S. Yeah. Okay, this is a so far. The description of the rough description of everything, everything group and everything monoid. Then let's jump to the next stage. Yeah, I can click. Oh, it's time. <laughs> yes, it's uh, how much do you need? More do you need? <laughs> because this is a one third of the whole story. Yes. <laughs> right then, uh, uh, okay, then I should. Uh, I'm sorry, then, uh, yeah, then there is some general framework that if there is exist, yeah, presentation of the fundamental group by positive words, some such equation, so, and the monoid uh, generated by this generator and the relation are uh, not cancellative, then you can associate some Eidenberg, not Eidenberg, but the classifying space. And in the classifying space, you are going to describe second homotopy class using these data. And then this, the conjecture is that in the elliptic case, uh, the this generator may be Zariski fan campaign generators. And using this generator system, that the class, the higher homotopy class in the classifying space should be identified with some higher homotopy class in this, the complement of F minus D. In this way, I am going to describe this homotopical structure on this space. But many things are still conjectural. And I, even I spent some more time to explain this, the results are still not definite. So better I should stop here. Thank you very much.